Hello and welcome to a video about the Datacake backend services, the Datacake cloud services. Most of the time we show the Datacake front end, but behind the front end there's a powerful self-developed backend and you can use that backend for your IoT products, IoT um, yeah, things that you sell in your company, manufacture them. Um, and also for mass deployment of IoT devices. Today, we are going to create a new device um, template or product, and then we are going to add a few uh, devices, like hundreds of devices, and I'm going to show you that this is just taking a few minutes. So first of all, um, I've created a new and empty workspace for this. This is how you would see it when you would log in, in onto Datacake and register. And we are now going to create our first device. We press on Add Device. We want to select API because right now we are developing um, a device integration for like um, a custom-built IoT device that's, uh, that you are producing, for example. Um, we select API. And we are going to select uh, new product, and we call this IoT fill level sensor, for example. You press on next, and we are going to create the first device. In here, we are going to leave everything like it is, and the name in here is like um, fill level sensor. I call that template because. I just want to work with one device and add all the things like dashboard, payload decoder, and so on, um, a database, and then we are going to add a couple of hundred devices. We press on next. Yeah, this is okay. I want to do the free plan. Um, we support up to two free devices. And now let's open this device up and go into the configuration. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is we are going to uh, define a couple of database fields. So we have two options, fields, which are like um, time series fields that store the actual sensor data and configuration fields. This makes sense if you add um, yeah, like 100 devices to the same product, they all look the same, behave the same, but if you want to add like environment variables for some bit of uh, configuration for these devices, we can use them. But first of all, let's create fields for this fill level sensor. Um, let's say we have battery, float, we create it. Let's say we have um, signal for the signal quality, create that. Um, we have the fill level, so let's call that level. And maybe we also have a temperature. What we're also interested, is, interested in is um, a location because we want to deploy that device somewhere in the field and you want to see the location on the map. So we are going to create the gear location field location and uh, also add this to our database. So now we've created five fields for that particular field level sensor, battery, signal, level, temperature, and location. Now, what we're going to do now is that we're going to add, um, yeah, we want to um, simulate data or store the actual data on it. And we have payload decoders in here. And also you can see that there is an URL being created for that particular device or product that we just created. And we're going to copy this URL. And what I've done is um, I've created a couple of scripts in Python to simulate sensor feed from an actual sensor. This is the device simulator, but also um, using our um, GraphQL API um, things to forward or to create um, devices programmatically. But first of all, let's take the device simulator and I'm going to paste here this URL from our um, REST or from the um, product. REST API, and then you can see, okay, numbers of sensors. Right now it's just one sensor, and there's a serial prefix level zero, zero. I'm going to copy that as well, and we are going to send temperature, battery, signal, level, location, and the serial. Okay, that's matching to, that's matching the fields we've created. So let's go back to Datacake and replace this serial number by level zero, zero, one. Save this, and now I'm going to, ah, there's another serial. I was preparing the demo. And let's make this um, IoT minus level 001. Copy that um, and save this, but also make like one. 
So the routing takes place on based on the serial numbers. You can provide custom serial numbers that your product already provi products already provide. We save this as well, but last but not least, we need a payload decoder. And I've already created one of those here. This is the one, copy it and pasting it. The um, things, the code that you just see, this is publicly available on GitHub, so you can use it as a reference. I'm not going to explain the code, but just to showcase you the um, possibilities in data cake. Okay, we've set everything up. Um, we need to save the payload decoder, and here you can see the database fields, and now I'm going to run the simulator once. Device simulator, and click on run. And yes, this was sending this data to data cake. And when we go back to data cake, we can see, okay, this sensor data is actually already recorded on data cake. That's super fine. Um, let's go ahead and maybe make a few things here to the fields. So battery, we can have some options on the field, like this is the device battery. We can tell data cake, okay, this field here, uh, stores information about the device battery. This field stores information about the device signal. Um, the next is level, which is the actual information that we are interested in. So this is primary because it's most important for us. And this is temperature. We can edit this and say, okay, I want this to have like secondary, so second important. And last but not least, this is device location. I'm doing this because instead of building a dashboard, which we could do and will do in a few, um, we have used these roles so that we can go to the device um, list. And we have a couple of things here like grid and map. And in the list, also, you can enable those things here like device signal and so on. And then you see the data as well. On the grid, you can see those cool cards and also opening up a sidebar dashboard. And on the map, you can already see this device in here um, being created on the map somewhere in Germany. Once more, we're using the simulator in here to provide demo data. This is random data. This could be your IoT devices. And now let's go ahead and add another 99 devices to it. So let's build our first IoT fleet. Let's go back to Data Cake. I need to go here into the workspace and get a workspace ID. That's the first thing that we need to do. Back to our um, Python scripts and there's the device creator. I need to fill in a couple of things like um, the workspace and also like the serial prefix, which was IoT level 00. Right, let's see once more. Device simulator IoT level 00. Yes, okay. Then, uh, like a name prefix, and also I need to provide a token. So, let's go back into our workspace up to members, API users, add a new API user, call this like GraphQL token, for example. Um, the permissions, well, I need to be able to add and remove devices, and maybe I want permissions for all devices. That's it, nothing else save this will create the api token show it copy it back to um, my simulator here um, let's um, paste in the token and i need the um, product you are pro and i need the product uid so let's go into the product configuration and let's go back into our Python script, paste this existing product UUID here. I'm going to check if we have everything that we need. Yes, this looks like it's pretty that what we need. So we want to create another 99 devices and starting offset from uh, one because we've created already the first sensor. Going to save this. And now what I need to do is run this creation script. Yeah, and as you can see, these devices are now being created on our back end. Um, I was giving our API a bit of rest, like 100 milliseconds. Could be faster, but it's a good thing not to run into any kind of um, rate limiting. So after a couple of seconds, we have been creating 99 devices. And the serial number should end with 100. Let's see, 98. And the first one is 01. So what was happening here is that I made a typo. I have forgotten to write level uh, with an additional L at the end. So it's now IoT level 
zero zero. That is not a problem because we can uh, basically um, add this or change this on the simulator. But if I go to data kick now, and if we go into devices, we can see, wow, yeah, there are right now 99 devices. Um, and what we are now going to do, because you can see only that existing device that we had was having data because we were using the simulator and that, we can change the simulator now to my serial number typo and then um, add another um, sensor data to all of these 100 devices. So back into my simulator, going to close this here, device simulator. I'm going to make sure that the typo is also in here and I want 100 sensors, save. And now I'm going to start the simulator for all of these devices. Again, this could be the place where your sensors, so like the 100 sensors, ingest data into um, our backend system. And so, yes, it has been running through all of these devices here. We've been forwarding um, sensor data for those 100 devices. Let's go into Data Cake um, and see the results. So we're going to reload this page once more. And now you can see that there are like 100 sensors. They are all online because they just received data and they all have, even if it's random, but they have sensor data and there's location means that also on the grid view, we can see all of those sensors now online providing data. And on the map, which is the coolest thing ever, you can see all of your devices on this map directly. And we've got this cool clustering, by the way, just to give you um, a sneak or a hint, uh, we will, Bring, um, showing sensor data here on the map as well. But yeah, this is, we could go ahead and now create another 200 devices, 300 devices, 1,000 devices, and they would be all added up to data cake. And you can use the data cake front end. For example, if we have one of those devices here, there's the sidebar dashboard, nothing on it, but I'm going to show you, we can add this and let's go ahead and add a dashboard. So first of all, we go into edit mode and we add a widget. The first widget that we add is like the value widget for, I'm going to uh, do this very quickly, level. The gauge is fill level. Yes, I want like this from to 100. Um, yeah, basic color, fluid animation, um, save this. And also I want a value widget for um, battery, save and maybe one also for uh, da -da -da -da, for appearance gauge no data i'm sorry um the temperature gauge circular add add 50 degrees is pretty warm that's cold save it and go to mobile then create from desktop override it Fill level is the most important. And these two here can be like a little bit smaller. Yeah, that's how we do it. Save it. Um, and now I've created the two dashboards. The mobile dashboard is especially important because now if we go to dashboard uh, devices and pick one of those here, we can see it in the sidebar now. And this is because I created one dashboard on the product. This is available now for all devices that we've just created. And even if we would add like 300 additional devices, they would all belong to the same, or they would all look the same and behave the same. And remember that I've told you that we have options like to um, add configuration for this. Oh, I need to fix my permissions in here. Um, I was doing it a bit wrong on creation. And then we can go into the configuration. And now you've got the option for configuration fields. And you can use these configuration fields to provide like a number. And we call that like um, fill level delta because every sensor is placed differently and you want to provide a delta. And we can have the units in millimeters. And this is like sensor delta in millimeters meters and now you can provide a default value i can say that all sensors have a default um, delta of 20 millimeters at this configuration field and you can see the default is 20 millimeters and now i could use this into the in the decoder and say like okay at if it's fill level please add 20 millimeters or add this as um, a configuration but then i could say set value and this now is the configuration for each individual device. I can set this device to 50. Um, now it's set to 50, but also if there's a problem, I could go to um, set value, 
reset to defaults, and it's back to 20. This is super cool for configuring individual devices for your complete whole fleet of devices. Last but not least, there's one additional thing that I wanted to show you. We are now working with the Datacake platform. You can use all the features that you have in here. You can work with groups. You can even create dashboards, um, sort them on the sidebar, and so on. But what about creating your own apps, creating your own front ends, and so on? And Datacake also is a good point to do that because we have an API. Um, I just showed you for writing sensor data and also for creating data. But we do also have um, an API for reading the data. And in here, what I'm going to do is, okay, I'm going to make a few things. Um, here I've got this device reader, um, also set to my token as well. There's the GraphQL API, and I'm running a few queries on it. Um, just to show you the result, I'm going to run this right now, and there's nothing important. It just fetches all of the data in the workspace and also the levels has some KPIs on it, and this is the one with maximum uh, level, and so on. You can use the GraphQL API to read out the data, to read out the workspace, and also the, your customers, everything that you see basically on Datacake front end is completely accessible through our um, GraphQL REST API. And this makes Datacake actually perfect for mass deployments of IoT devices. We could create different kind of workspaces now, move devices into comp of different workspaces, you can build an app on it, and we take care about everything, ingestion via LoRaWAN, MQTT, API, um, CoAP as well through other third-party services. Whatever you want, um, you can deploy it on Datacake um, without um, needing to set up like a whole chain of IoT things like time series database, base, and so on. Everything comes with Datacake. You can use that. You can go ahead and test it for your first two devices for free, and then you can move on and yeah, uh, deploy a couple of different more devices on Datacake and yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.